Hey guys, welcome back to the next part of this series. Today we're going to be finishing the little um, chainmail coif that we've been working on. So uh, here we go. Now, the first thing I need to do is I actually need to jump into substance because we need to export the things out. And I'm actually going to close Maya. We don't need it anymore. So let's just save the scene. I don't remember if I saved the scene before or not. Chainmail coif. There we go. And uh, we're just going to open recent and we're going to open our chainmail textures. There we go. So uh, the main thing here is I want to show you how it is possible to export this texture in any sort of uh, texture setup. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's for Unity, for Unreal, for Maya, for Arnold. Like you can export anything in any way in which you want. And we're going to be using Marmoset to create a very simple small scene uh, to render this thing out. So I'm going to go into export textures. And we're, of course, going to export them in our, I would go, yeah, the assets folder is fine. And let's select like a random template. Let's say in this case, we're going to be using the Unity template. So I'm going to use, I'm going to be using the Unity HDR render metallic standard. OK, so what's going to happen here? Well, of course, you already remember the outputs that we have. And if we go into the list of exports, we're going to have a base map and a missive, a mask map and a normal map. So uh, if we check here, I know that the opacity, as you can see here on the wait, that's not it. We're using the Unity HDR pipeline. Uh, yeah, this should be it. So on the base map, as you can see here, we're going to have our color map and we're going to have our opacity map. OK, so our, our, our opacity element is going to be um, nested inside of the opacity channel. If this is new to you, if you haven't heard about the, the multi-channel textures that you can have, check out the video from a couple of days ago. It's called, I believe, multi-channel textures. And I go very, very in depth about how this thing works. Then we have this mask map right here, which, as you can see, we have the metallic. We have the mixed ambient occlusion. So there's an ambient occlusion here. And we have the glossiness. So our metallic and our glossiness is going to be right here on the on the uh, um, red channel and on the alpha channel. We're going to have our traditional normal map and we're going to have an emissive map, which in this case we don't have an emissive, so we're not expecting to get an emissive map. We're, of course, going to export this at 4K. And I think I'm going to say Targa. We definitely need a, a full or a type of... Uh, of setup or of image that has transparency. You cannot get all of the alpha channels if you're not using an, an, an element that has um, doo -doo -doo -doo, um, transparency. So I'm just going to export here. And let's open Marmoset 4 real quick. So I'm not going to go super in depth about the interface here. Uh, this is just a very basic, basic overview of the of the system. It's super, super easy to do. You have your scene here, like your outliner, your viewport and your materials. So I'm going to go file and I'm going to import the model first. So that means that I need to go right here and grab this guy right here and hit open Ta -da! right here. Perfect. And uh, let's change the, the sky. Give me just one second. So to change the sky real quick, you're just going to go here into the sky options. And we have this uh, library that we can use um, here in the presets. Of course, we have all of this basic presets down here. And it's just a matter of double clicking the one that we want. Now, I want this to be a sort of, a, I would say, I, I don't want to call it a cinematic render or anything, but I want to make it look a little bit more contrasty uh, than what we had in, in, the, in substance. So I think I think I'm going to go with this abandoned house. I'm just going to double click. Uh, now, all of this sky is one of the cool things about Marmoset 4. They're all uh, in your library. They're just on the cloud. Of course, you can see the little cloud icon. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of options. The Marmoset 3, we only had very few options and you had to buy more. Here we have a lot of them. So there we go. Now, some people like to see the actual background on the back. I personally don't like it, but if you want to just change this one right here to color or sorry, to sky. And that's it. That's the, that's the sky. I personally like using uh, the color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select like a very dark color because I really want the the chain mill to to look very nice. So we're going to do something like this. Now, here's where the fun part begins. And it's very important that you understand this. We need to create the material right now. When we imported this guy, it imported itself with a, the Lambert one. So we can use that one. It, it would be just a matter of uh, properly naming this to make sure it looks cool. I like to use the M underscore uh, like naming convention. So that I know that that's the material and we have all of these guys right here. So if we go back to substance real quick bloop, and we go to the output directory, it's this one right here. So you can see we have these three guys right here. Now I'm going to move this to the other screen. So you guys are not going to be able to see it, but we're going to be, we're going to start connecting things so that we get this exact same result. However, here in Marmoset and it's very easy in the albedo color. That's where the base map or the base color is going to be going. So the albedo color goes right there and you can see that, boom, we have the color. 
So everything is looking nice. It's, it's, it has the proper uh, color. Uh, however, we don't have the proper transparency. For the transparency, we're going to go down here to the transparency tab and we're going to use a cutout transparency. Cutout is when you have like just flat black and, and white and the dither is when you have a little bit of a, of a transition. And there's a very cool uh, option here that, as you can see, allows you to use the alpha map from the albedo. So the first option is use albedo alpha. And that's very, very common. Most of the of the textures that we use in the 3D world that are gonna be using um, transparency, they will have that map on their albedo map or in the diffuse channel. It's just easier to save it there. So a lot of the softwares nowadays have this option to just get that transparency directly from the albedo. And as you can see, there we go. Now you can of course change the threshold, which is gonna increase or decrease the, the amount of alpha. So if you feel like it's a little bit small or big, you can just tweak it around here a little bit. Do not move this one though, because right now we have zero and one. We don't have any sort of blending, so it's just going to disappear. Everything's going to disappear. So there we go. We have the color. Now, one big question, right? Like, why are we not seeing the inside here? Super important. This is something that you also need to change on the engines, Unity or Unreal, if you're going to use any of those. You need to select your geometry, and on the options here, I'm going to remove this call back faces. So I want to render the back faces. I want this material to be a two-sided material. Otherwise, we're not going to see both sides of the element, and the whole thing that we're working on will just uh, break apart. So yeah, that's the, that's the color, and that's the opacity, which was our first map, if you remember. And then we have this uh, mask map, the, the second one. And again, if we go back to substance, and we go back to the export textures, to the templates, and we check this Unity render, we have this mask map, and we know that the red channel is our metallic channel, and then the alpha channel is our glossiness channel. Very important. So let's plug those in first. Let's go back to Marmoset. And uh, I'm gonna go here to reflectivity. I need to make sure that this is set up to metalness. If for any reason you're working with another thing that has a different sort of map, make sure you click here and you're gonna change to specular and that's gonna be a specular metalness. So again, as I mentioned, Marmoset is really powerful because you can change between the, the methods and it's uh, it's very, very easy to do so. So yeah, here in the reflections, not GGX, we're gonna, or no, sorry, where is it? Dun -dun -dun. Here, reflectivity, metalness is fine. So we're just gonna plug the mask map here and we're gonna change the channel to make sure that it's pointing to the right channel. And in this case, it is. And as you can see, now the metal is actually behaving like a metal and the leather is behaving like leather. So things are working nicely. Then we're gonna go here into the Microsoft, the Microsoft uh, Surface. And very important, right now this is set up to roughness. However, if we go back here and we see this, you're gonna see that this is actually exporting glossiness, not roughness, glossiness. So I need to change the channel from uh, roughness to glossiness and just plug in this mask map again and change this to the alpha channel because the alpha is what's gonna be telling this thing how it should uh, shade everything. So as you can see, now this is working uh, closer to what we had in, the, in substance, looking like a metal. It's very nice. Uh, quick shortcut, shift and right click. It's gonna move the light around. So as you can see, we can see how the, the light uh, transitions throughout all of the elements. And now the magic map, the map that's gonna pretty much give us the, the whole thing. That's of course the normal map. So if I just go here into the normal map and plug this in, there we go. We're now gonna have our normal map working. Now, small uh, little detail here. Sometimes, sometimes, let me see if this is the case the normal map is inverted because we were working with a direct X normal map, if you remember uh, correctly. And sometimes when you export it, it's it's not actually direct X that you want, it's OpenGL. Don't worry, it's just the Y channel that is to be flipped. So I'm gonna give it a test here. I'm gonna flip the Y channel and I'm, let me see which one looks like the proper one. Should be fairly easy to see. One of them is gonna look like if, it's, if the rings are going downwards and the other one's gonna look like the rings are going forward. I think we do need to flip the channel. Uh, let me go over here. Just take a look here. Yeah, this one looks definitely better. So I'm gonna keep the flip Y, uh, just to make sure that we're using the, the proper one. And that's it. Now, you might remember that we also have on the mask map, and I'm actually gonna open the map so that we can see it in, in Photoshop. We had another channel here in Substance, which was the green channel, which is saving a mixed AO. So what's the mixed AO? Technically, and if uh, I'm not mistaken, let's go to Photoshop. Just wait a couple of seconds. Let me, no, I was gonna pause, but no, it's, it's loading already. There we go. So if we take a look here at the channels, you're gonna see that the green channel has a very nice, uh, a little bit of an opacity mask. So we have a little bit of extra darkness on the borders of the object. We don't have ambient occlusion from the rings. It's just like the, the ambient occlusion from the actual um, uh, geometry, right? So if you want to plug in the the uh, that specific map to get a, a little bit of an extra punch here, one thing that we can do is go down here to the occlusion tab 
and just add a occlusion. And the occlusion node, as you might expect, will add another channel here. And we're going to be able to just plug in this a mask map and change this channel to the a green channel. So there we go. Now, if things get a little bit too dark, remember, you can change them around here. You can see the, the little uh, border here getting a, an extra shadow, which is very, very cool. I'm going to leave it up. I think that's fine. And now let's talk about lights. Uh, I'm just going to add the, the typical three point light setup, which is super, super basic, which, by the way, we cover in our course. It's going to be coming out very, very, very soon. And um, the basic setup says that we need a main light. So I'm going to select a main light. That's going to be our like our key light is the light that's going to be uh, focusing the most our, our piece. Um, I am going to increase the brightness a little bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the, the distance. If you increase this diameter, you're going to get a softer shadow. All of this we cover on the on the on the course, by the way. So and we're going to change the, the darkness here, the sharpness. There we go. A little bit of a wider angle, a little bit of vignette. I think that's fine. There we go. Now I am going to use my sky as my field light. So I'm just going to increase the, the sky light just a little bit so that the shadows are not as contrasty. And finally, I'm going to go to the back part here and I'm going to add another light. And this one, I'm actually going to crank up a little bit higher because I want this to be my, uh, my rim light. Now this is a little bit too intense. Let's soften the shadows, bring the, the diameter back a little bit. Spot angle, let's make it smaller. And yeah, maybe a little bit more or a little bit less, sorry. So I just want to like very, very, like I can even just bring the, the cone shape down. And that way I'm going to be able to calculate where the, the high points are. Now I'm going to definitely change the color here. Let's make it like a, like a light blue just to get a little bit of a, of a different feel. See that? Look at that. It's beautiful, right? Now, very quick little tip here. I'm going to go to render and I'm going to use ray tracing. And ray tracing, it's a new technology. It's not new technology, but it's, it's been implemented more and more in, in recent years. And it will trace things better, reflections, refractions, lights, shadows. It will give you a super, super realistic effect. I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion as well because I want to add just like an extra little punch there. And we can turn on local reflections, local diffuse, like all of the bells and whistles. Now, I personally have a 1080 uh, GPU, so that allows me to, to create a very nice uh, effect. Uh, so if you feel that like your computer starts to like bog down when, with all of this, just, just don't, don't, uh, don't, don't do it super, super intensely and you should be fine. Um, fog is something that everyone loves, right? So a little bit of fog here and there. It's really cool, but I don't think it's going to be helpful for us right now. So I'm just going to delete it. Uh, what I can do though, and it's, um, it's very cool as well. It's, I am just going to try and find a good snapshot here. There we go. Now, as you can see, there's a bar down here. This is the, the ray tracing that's doing its job. So as soon as it's filled, it means that it's finished doing the ray tracing. And that's it. I'm just going to go into render. And I'm going to say uh, render viewport to clipboard, which will render uh, the viewport. And it will copy that image into my clipboard. And technically, if I jump into Photoshop, I should be able to have the full uh, render in just a second. Control R. Is another of the shortcuts. Let's go to Photoshop. And in Photoshop, if you press Control N, it will create a canvas with the, with the size that you're using. And look at this, a beautiful guy. So again, this is transparent. You might not see it because the, the links are really close together, but you can see the little holes in there. So if we had a character here, like a full character with everything, we would see all of the elements. So hopefully you guys like this uh, little mini project. Let me know what you think about this format. I, I was uh, thinking about how to mix things up and I, I love doing the big projects where it takes us a full week and 30 minute videos where we just go and, and do a lot of very interesting stuff. But I also wanna keep it light sometimes and just do smaller videos. So let me know if you like this format, this mini project format, uh, just three, two videos of 10, 15 minutes uh, with all the useful information for specific things. And that's it. We just go straight to the, to the point. So that's it. Please leave us a like, share, subscribe. We're in the spooky month, so leave me ideas down here about what kind of things would you like us to do. Should we do a zombie or like a skeleton, maybe a vampire? Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want, and I'll be happy to, uh, to create more content for you guys. This is it for me. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.